Well, hi guys, welcome to another episode of TJM. A little interesting one. Um, I'm always on the search for cheap and interesting Jaguars. I, I browse for every media possible to see what's on the market, get an idea of prices. And this one has caught my eye. Um, I used to own one. It's a uh, 1980 pre-HE Mine was a 79 Barbie. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it in the past. And I've since sold it, sadly. But why I looked at this one is because it's a road-going pre-HE XJS that he just drove from Melbourne to Sydney and apparently went no problems. And he wants only 8500 Aussie dollars for it. Now, things have changed a lot in the few last few years. With COVID, prices have gone up ridiculously. Now they've come down a little bit on classics like this one. But for eight and a half grand, I just want to see what you can get an XJS for eight and a half grand. So we'll hop in the car. I'm going to take Anna and we're going to drive up there and have a look at this car and see if it's really worth it or not. So we'll head up the hill. It's about a half hour drive up to have a look at this thing. Um, Pre-HEs are pretty sought after these days. They're not as popular as HEs, but they've got a cop following. So it's going to take us about half an hour to get up there and we'll see how much XJS, eight and a half thousand Aussie dollars, will buy you. Okay, we're up here. And well, looks at things, there's more than one Jaguar to this bloke's got. I understand he's a motor dealer and so we'll see what he's got and why he's got this thing available well, here it is looks bloody oh got a few e-types in there as well interesting i'll go and find the owner and see if we can have a talk to him. looks pretty good it's got a, got a few marks on it Knock, knock. G'day, Ken, is it? Yes. Hey, mate, how are you? Brett. Brett. Yeah, good on you, mate, thanks. It looks all right. I had a quick walk around downstairs and, and uh, have a little look at it. Yep, Jaguars Jagu everywhere. Yeah, I know, I'm surprised. I didn't know you were actually a motor dealer when I first saw the ad, so um, it's good. Wow, and who's... there as well, which is part of the family. Mate, that's a beautiful motor car. That car was uh, racing uh, by Brian Redmond in America. Really, I don't know him, but he raced it. Yes, he raced at uh, Laguna Seca in a couple other places. Yeah, no, she's beautiful. So, is this yours? You own this one? Uh, we sold to a client, but uh, we still own it for him. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's got the V8. I don't oh, yes. know too much yes. about the. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. What model's this called again? The SP250. SP250, yes, I did know that. Yes. What's under this that's, cover? That's oh, that's. Uh, yeah. Just about to sell. There's a couple of Nick and Fugue on the restoration of oh. these. So, yeah, so I understand. Hello, Nick. Oh, yeah? I'm Brett, mate. How are you? Yeah, 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 yeah good. So, you share this place with Ken, do you? Yes. Okay, so you do this restorations. Ken does the selling. Is that how it goes? That's how it works, yes. Okay, all right. Well, let's get up here to see what we're actually here to look at. This thing. So, tell us a bit about it, Ken. 1980 Strain Delivered XJS. Yeah. Pretty tidy, I mean, for the originality yeah. of it. Low, low case, uh, ex Victorian club car, Jaguar car club member. Okay. Yeah. So, the reason why I wanted to do this video was yes. because it's on the lower scale of the spectrum of XJSs, yeah. and yes. you don't find them at this sort of money that are road going That's XJSs. Right. So, it really, I was intrigued yeah. to come up and have a look at it. Excellent car on the road, and has done low mileage. It's a fairly straight car as well. Yeah, yeah. See. Okay. It looks like original paint. Yes. It needs a little bit of tidying up. Yeah, tidy but up. It hasn't been painted before. The PHE. Just... Yeah. So uh, it's got the uh, later, later uh, wheels. HE wheels on it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. A few little marks here and there. But I mean, she doesn't seem like it have a lot of rust in it. Really? No, it's, it's got a little bit of surface rust. It's sat parked for 10 years. Really? Caused most of that. Yeah. 
Obviously, the Piece rubbers. Of rubbers. Are... So, did you drive it from Melbourne? Drove did you back say? To Melbourne. Cool. Yes. Been driving a fair bit too, so uh, it's a terrific car on the road. Really good car. Nice and tidy and clean under there, isn't it? Yes. So, had much interest in it so yeah, far? Yeah. I'm coming to buy it this afternoon. Oh, do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Well, why not? Yeah, you're a car I, club I, member. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, if, if I didn't have as many items yes. going as I do, it'd be in my garage by now, can I tell you? Yeah. Can we uh, start it up? It's super cold, so it hasn't been started this morning. a little bit of a tune but the, for a cold start in the morning no smoke blew out of that whatsoever and it settled down really well only in a matter of seconds so yeah she sounds lovely yeah a little bit of surface rust here and there but the bumpers they're in excellent order and they're the things that go on these really early I don't like the chrome wheel arches but they can go but they don't look like they've caused any rust underneath it. Sounds like it's got a little bit of a uh, exhaust leak under there, but I'm looking at under there and it looks like that's a brand new exhaust. So that's a big bonus as well. Well, Ken's graciously allowed me to take it for a test drive. So, see how this old girl runs, like 40 years old or something. windows work seats sitting a little bit low but that's nothing park brakes off but the lights still showing on and the stop lights are working it tells me seat belt does it work seat belts in we're in drive I think it's got a bit of an aftermarket exhaust system on it sounds like it's got a bit of a leak but it's, a very, it's quite loud. Now it started to rain, so we can't push this thing. Not that I was going to push it, but wipers are working it's as much as old XJS wipers do work. She runs pretty nicely. Looks like it's just a slight lack of power compared to my last uh, pre-HE. My last pre-HE was um, a Barbie. Barbie was a 1979, it's a 1980. So this is one of the last pre-HEs before the uh, HEs came out. And um, Barbie was a lovely car. And yeah, I sold that for quite a considerable amount more money than this guy's asking for this one. She drives really well. She's got, um, I can see she's uh, got a few little issues inside. Like it's got the cloth seats. You rarely see them with the cloth seats. And sadly, like the leather, they don't last. So it really, they really do need recovering. Oh, but then there's no, no tears and um, dash is tidy. I can see that the uh, the glove box has been tampered with, either broken or tried to, someone's got into it. The vinyl on the uh, leather door, on the uh, vinyl on the doors, they're starting to, to go as well, and the carpets are pretty much on their way up. But it's a restoration problem. Uh, it's a restoration project. It's, it's not supposed to be something that's um, absolutely common, especially for this money. rattles in, in the suspension um, it's very tight steering is very precise no noises in the uh, steering rack in the um, 
steering box. Speedo works, speedos in kilometres, so it is an Australian delivered car. I think we might just chuck it here with you. Go back. going up this hill and I've got a fair bit of acceleration on there so that motor does need a little bit of tweaking I don't think there's anything too seriously wrong with it probably just plugs and a little bit of a tune but it doesn't have that normal V12 power that, I, that I'm used to in the especially in the pre-HEs I found I found the pre-HEs a little bit more torquey than the HEs they are have a, a larger horsepower motor in it. And I'm told this thing is a 10 to 1 compression ratio. I don't know what PHEs really do have. I they're a 9 to 1. So um, I don't know why they're, this one is any different. See, regardless of its condition, it's a very honest car. You can feel it's an honest car. It just really needs a little bit more TLC and a bit of loving. And it could be made into such a really, really nice motor car. I'll just pull up down here and just have a, another little walk around. Nice wide road we can pull up. A little bit of top. I'll just have a little bit of a check. Well, I would prefer the Kent alloys that would have come with it. Uh, the uh, starfish, they're okay. They're a nice wheel. See, it's popping a little bit, so it does need a bit of a tune. Oop. Factory sunroof, but I see it's been sicker-flexed up, so that will need to be uh, looked after. has a leaper on it. It's got a little old England badge on it. I'm really impressed with how good condition the uh, the pre-HE bumpers are on it. Headlights, they're starting to lose their uh, glossiness. That's pretty standard. The silver on the, uh, the vents, that's standard. HEs came out black. Pre-HEs are silver. Oh, that's a bit of a worry. She is leaking a bit of water. And that's wet from all this rain we've had. That floor looks like it still might be recoverable. But there is some, certainly some uh, surface thrust there. Just bits and pieces around it. Have a look at this engine while it's warm up, warmed up now. She's running rather smooth. I love these beautiful things. I've learned a lot about them over the years, I'm starting to get better with them. It's still really not that complicated. See the thermo fans working, so she's staying nice and cool. Doesn't look like it's been converted to uh, R134 gas. I could be wrong. Because it's still got the old fittings on it. There's no sticker anywhere. The map sensor looks like it's not that old. Yeah, no, she's good. Very honest. Get this old girl back. There you are. Yeah, certainly if I didn't have as many projects going at the time, I would seriously consider this car. Because I know that a little bit of work, a little bit of tidying up, what you can actually achieve and get for them. And uh, look, the uh, speedo is saying, it's a five-digit speedo saying 160 
same, sorry, 64,000 kilometres. So my guess is it's 164 or 264. I, there is some books there. There's no service books or receipts, just a book. Well, everything works on it, except for the air conditioning, the radio's going, it's got a later model Pioneer system in it. So if anyone's interested, I just, um, I can, in this thing, I think it'll go quick, but I'll uh, put Ken's details down below with a link to his uh, web address, because there's some other cars there too that are also beautiful. A uh, classic one is uh, this uh, 89. Uh, this one here. Yeah. Convertible. 5.3 litre. I better not run into that D type while I'm here, otherwise, it won't be a, a cheap exercise. I believe Ken's selling this 89 convertible as well. However, it's on the other end of the spectrum in dollars wise. I think it's 10 times more he's asking for it than uh, that pre HE. It's got TWR, TWR wheels on it. It's quite dirty because he just been up Bathurst for the um, Bathurst 1000. But she's a beautiful looking motor car. It's pretty hard to tell why it's so wet, but yeah, it's available. Well, hi guys, that's a wrap. Uh, I did thank Ken very much for allowing us to have a look at and review his um, pre-HE XJS. And I got a message from him uh, later on when I got back to the office that he sold it. So congratulations, Ken, that was good, but it was a bargain buy anyway, in my view. And uh, so we're also going to follow on and talk to Nick from Smart Restorations and we looked at some of his gorgeous motor cars that he's been restoring for clients. But I think that that deserves a, a separate uh, video for, which um, I have and I'm in the process of editing it. So that'll be coming up pretty soon, guys. And anyway, if you like this episode, just give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, just press that handsome button down there somewhere. And don't forget to tell your mates. See you guys.